Hello world, welcome to the 79th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the 7th video in my Python for Finance playlist. This video is independent of the others in the playlist, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out those videos as well. So I watch a lot of Python videos on YouTube and I came across this video. In this video, this gentleman manually goes to Yahoo Finance and downloads the S&P 500 historical data. Then he goes to the Russell 2000 and downloads the historical data. He moves them from his downloads to another folder and renames them with the date. And then he uses matplotlib to graph them out. So the link to his video will be in the description as well. Check out his video. His channel is awesome. So I thought, let's automate this whole process. So in today's video, we're going to use Selenium to download the um, S&P 500 historical data, the largest amount they have, the Russell 2000 historical data. Then we're going to move it from our downloads to a data file with today's date automatically. And then we're going to um, have matplotlib give us a graph and compare the two. So the S&P 500 is the country's, is America's 500 biggest countries. The Russell 2000 is the smaller companies. And um, they kind of move together and then switch. And for some people, that's a uh, indicator of, um, you know, how the economy is doing. So we're going to automate that whole process. So... Let me just show you my downloads folder. So the last thing is this file right here. And then there's nothing in this data folder. OK, so we're going to run the code real quick. So first, we're going to download the files. So let's check this out. All right. If you look in the lower left, we just downloaded the files and then I close down uh, Selenium it says files have downloaded this is what happens when the driver closes I can ignore that if I want to all right so now let's check our downloads folder all right there it is great so let's close that real quick now <coughs> let's move those folders or those files to this data folder so let's run this All right. Now those uh, folders have been renamed. Before it had the caret GSPC or GSPC and then the caret RUT. Those are the indexes of these two when you go to Yahoo Finance to find them. So what I did was I renamed them and put today's date on there. All right. So if we go back to our downloads folder, those are no longer there. And now Let's graph it out. All right, so I think I chose, I'd have to look at the date I put my uh, graph on, but I think this is like 1998 all the way until 2021. That way it comes out here. And as you can see, they have the same, um, if you were to log these, um, you would see that they follow the same pattern, right? But you can see that the S&P 500 and then something happens here and then it flips. And you'll see the Russell 2000 or the small caps go higher. And then you'll see about here, it starts to switch. So basically after a downturn, and this is normal, after a large downturn, this is the 2008 financial collapse. This is the uh, tech bubble boom, if you will. This is uh, COVID 2016. And so usually what happens is the market overreacts and the Russell 2000 does worse. Then those small caps go higher on the way up. And then eventually, once we have some momentum, like you see here, you'll see the S&P 500, our biggest 
companies go higher. So um, if, you know, history repeats itself, when we go back up, the Russell 2000 will continue to do better until it doesn't. And then the S&P 500 will go higher. So these are called lagging indicators or what we like to say, the past performance doesn't indicate the future. But this is a um, well-known factor. And most people like me just have diversified portfolio of index funds that tracks them both. All right, so let's go through the code real quick. So this is multiple libraries and I split it out for this video, this YouTube. So first we're going to import Selenium and we're going to import the web driver. I always import these two right here because it's you have to use the web driver wait function quite a lot. And then um, if I were going to make this an object orientated, I would try and accept all the possible uh, conditions possible. Um, you'll need some exceptions. You'll need time. You'll need this shutil or the utilities. You'll need the date because we use today's date. Um, we didn't use the all of matplotlib, but this is just the start of this file. We'll do a lot more in this economics file. But we did use the pyplot, and we imported it as plt. We used pandas to read it as a data frame. That's when you manipulate the data. We didn't use numpy, but I imagine we will. And then uh, I had to ignore all the warnings because my uh, matplotlib gives a bunch of warnings. Okay, so the first thing we did was we downloaded the files. So what did we actually do, right? So we create this global driver. That way you can use it in this try and um, um, you can keep using it in multiple try or if and then statements. Then I use Chrome. So I'm not going to go into it. This isn't really a tutorial, but um, these are all the things you need to do to do some automation or else Chrome yells at you. I like Chrome for automation. Internet Explorer can actually block you from doing stuff like this. But if you add all these uh, arguments, then it helps you. Then you always have to make sure you have the newest Chrome driver. And if you don't, I throw an exception that tells me to download the new version of Chrome driver. So if you get a uh, error that says you need to download it, then just Google Chrome driver and download the most recent one. Then what we do is we do driver.get this link. And let me show you um, oops, how you get this link. So we're going to go to yahoo.com. Click on finance, or you could go finance.yahoo.com. Right? Then we're going to go uh, the carrot stick, which for me is above my six, RUT. That's the Russell 2000. Okay, you click on historical data. Okay, we want the historical prices right here. We want the max. So this goes back to 1987. Then we want the daily closes. You can change it if you want less data. And then you click this download button right here. And so if you're trying to do your own data pool, make sure that it, what's called cookies, that this keeps expanding, right? So if we press apply, you'll see that it, the URL expands, right? So it's kind of hard coded, which is weird for Yahoo being such a big, uh, a big uh, site. And then you're going to right click this. and go copy link address and that's where you do driver get right here all right same thing with the s p 500 <coughs> excuse me g s p c i hope i said that right earlier same thing historical data Historical data. Oops. Historical data. 
then show uh, time period max and you'll see this goes back to 1927 then we download that well press apply that way the URL builds copy link address and then that's what we have here mine's flip-flop I did the SMP 500 first now we did have to add time.sleep because uh, Chrome driver is literally like a person on the internet and it's kind of slow and then I closed it printed your files have downloaded and then I just have an accept import error because sometimes if you didn't do it right you'll get an import error and then that's it so just the driver dot get method um, if you plan on using this make sure that you're finding a URL that builds all right so that's pretty much it then we're gonna move those files this one's kind of easy so you're just going to use the date dot today, make it a string. That way you can concatenate it to the file name. Then all you do is you do, you need to have a source path. So the original location and a destination path. So this is the SMP source path, SMP destination path. You have to get the literal path name. And then I save it, add the today. So I concatenated it with a space dot csv comma separated values file same thing with the russell 2000 and then you just use this shutil dot move pass it the source path pass it the destination path so you can pass the strings in these as well so if you didn't want to define the variables let's say you weren't gonna you don't want to use the today function you can do all of that here i just don't like to do that i like to define variables just in case i want to use it elsewhere so that's it for the move files pretty easy you could do that you can automate quite a bit with just this my download file is kind of embarrassing uh, good practice is to always have those download files empty mine's not next is this compare indices so again um, I declare today I define the SMP 500 file as the file that's in that I could do a for loop if I wanted to and find the files. Then we're going to create a data frame, right? SMP data frame by doing pandas. So pd.readcsv. And then you pass it this file name. Then we're going to look at the date. And we're going to make it a date time. And then we're going to sort the values on that date just in case it's not already. So what that does is it helps um, pan, um, pandas does it all for you and it sorts all of this for you so if you have two things with the same dates same uh, date or different date uh, strings you can use the two dot date time down here and make it look the same and then you can sort those values so these are the same files now if you remember the SMP 500 goes back to 1987 or um 1897 I believe the Russell 2000 does not so what we did was we defined a start date and then we defined it an end date again I recommend this gentleman's video he goes into much more detail uh, his is more of a tutorial mine's just walking you through it then this right here you might want to pause this if you are copying and pasting the code I recommend going to his video he walks you through it so what you're doing is aligning the start and end dates for the SMP and the Russell 2000 then if you are unfamiliar with how matplotlib works then this will look like Greek to you but basically what we're doing is we're creating the figure in the axis we're making subplots this is the figure size 14 by 6 that looks nice on my uh, little laptop the titles are symbol one which is what we defined up here the GSPC and symbol two so that's the title is these two comparing them and then you do a plot so I put the SMP 500 closing right so date is the um, X axis the closing is the Y I colored it red and I called it passed it the label of symbol one again the S&P 500 then you do dot grid 
Then you do a legend. So I want the SMP 500 to be in the lower right. Then we're going to make a second axis, a second X axis by doing twin X. And then we're going to do the same kind of plot. The closing, you pass it the date, the close. I colored it blue. You can color it whatever you want. And then we passed it this uh, symbol two, which is caret RUT. Then we put that, so RU, caret RUT in the upper left. So if you're using, if you are following the source video for this code right here, he does it in Jupyter Notebook. So you, you can just stop right here and press the play button and it plays in your local host. So if you are using PyCharm like me or any IDE, it's not a local host. So you need to do plot.show to show it. So let me move my face as we end this. Compare indices. So now that I run, ran the code, you can see that here is one axis, here is another axis. The time is the x axis because that's the common thing. The legend is up here. The title is up here. I could have called this something else if I was more clever. And here are the closing prices, blue and red. You can change that using, right here, using the real titles, string titles of the names of the color. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please sub consider subscribing to my channel. I just hit 1,000 view hours. You need 4,000 to become a YouTube partner and get paid. And that's what I'm trying to do. So um, I need subscribers. If you like this video, please press like. And uh, watch all my Python for, P Python for Finance playlist. And watch them all the way through to help me out. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.